there are hundreds if not thousands of videos on YouTube and articles everywhere right across the internet telling you how to succeed and win on eBay. Some of them are good, some of them are repeating the same old rubbish, but what I always want to know when I'm trying to make any changes and any improvements is what, why and how. Three key things. So based on my experiences over the last year, I'm going to have a wee look at that and we're going to have a chat about it. Um, and if I'm right, I'm right. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. It is just my opinion and what I've observed. Anyway, before we do that, I've also got a few orders going out. Really, really slow day yesterday. Um, there was zero orders. Sorry, that's a, that's a lie. That's a fib. I had one order early yesterday morning, which went out on yesterday's video. That was a bundle of Peter May books, I think it was. Uh, and then I had nothing, nothing until about half past 10, 11 o'clock last night. A couple of orders in before midnight and then a couple of orders again early hours of this morning. So I can show you them and we're going to have a chat about what, why and how. Yeah, that's what I've written down. What, why and how. So I've written it down. I'm going to keep saying it. Right, let's have a look at an order. We'll do two single books that we've got going out the door. And the first one is Shari La Pena, A Stranger in the House. I've got quite a reasonable stack of these. I've just got them listed up as single books. I don't have a bundle of them yet. So I've only got maybe five or six different titles. So I've not put them on as a variation listing. But that one on its own sold for £6.84. And the second single book, these both went out 10.30 and then this one went at 10.54 last night. And that's Chekhov's Three Sisters, uh, a new version by Nicholas Wright. So it's obviously, it's a play and that sold as well for £6.84. So that was the two singles and I've also got two bundles, but I'll show you them in a few minutes. coffee break first. Right, so one of the things, I'm just really really looking at one thing and I want to get dig down into it. Uh, when you watch a lot of YouTubers talking about how to succeed at eBay and how to make the most of it, a common, common thing is daily listings. You know, try and list one thing every day or 10 things every day or 100 things every day, but be consistent about how you do it. And I've always wondered why that is the case. So thinking about what the why that, the why of having consistent listings takes us back a step to the what. So consistent listings, what is that going to achieve? Um, and the kind of the top level of it, it means that you're putting up new items for people to buy every single day. So you're always refreshing your stock and there's always something new for people to come back and look at. And if people know that you're putting new stuff up every single day, then perhaps they're more likely to come back and look and see what you've added on that day. But to be honest, that's going to have quite a small impact on your overall productivity and sales. If you're a relatively small seller um, and by that I mean you could have thousands of items listed but you're still relatively small compared to the big sellers then you're still only going to have quite a small percentage proportion of your customers that are going to come back on a daily basis to see what you've listed so although that can be part of it it's not going to be significant um, a second part of it would be creating that habit for yourself so I do this because I need to earn money. There's a lot of people do this because they want to earn money. You know, it's going to help pay the bills. It's going to help pay for the holiday. It's going to make life easier to have that extra income coming in. So you need to get motivated. Uh, motivation needs habit to allow that. So if every day you're used to sitting down for an hour and sticking up five, 10, 20 listings, whatever it is, then that becomes habit. 
which means that you're going to succeed with the business even in days where you can't really be bothered it's become habit so you'll do it so that's another kind of reasoning behind doing the daily listings but there has to be more to it than that for it to make a significant difference to your business so over the last year eBay sales for me for like everyone else up and down up and down up and down and there's this weekend's been a really good example so on Saturday, uh, 50 or 60 items sold, packed up, out the door. Sunday, it dropped down to around about a dozen. And yesterday, it dropped down to about one, two, three. Well, <clears throat> excuse me, three sales, seven books. So that's a massive dip. One of my worst days for months and months and months and months and months. But you accept that. eBay does go up and down. But what caused it? What's the reasoning behind it? Um, I hear a lot of talk about eBay servers. And depending which server you're on at any given time, then that can impact your sales because it shows your items to different people or if you've just been migrated over onto a new server for some of your items because they're doing maintenance on one, then... It can take a while for it to you know, re-establish itself and get you back into the algorithm. So thinking about it from if that server thing is true, and it seems likely and obvious uh, for a business the size of eBay, the number of customers they've got you know, across the country, never mind across the world, they will have multiple servers. So places where all your inventory and details are stored at a time and that can potentially move around. Um, Evidence to support that things move around is I get flurries of sales. So if, and again, there's been some really good examples over the last couple of weeks. Bernard Cornwall didn't sell them for ages and then three or four days in a row, sale, 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 sale. So what happened? Why did that suddenly start moving out the door? And I've had lots of other authors where it's been exactly the same incident. I love coffee. So, is that because that listing has been migrated onto a different server and it's it's working? Or has it just sat on a server for a certain amount of time whilst the listing's built momentum and then you get sales from it? Either way, it does sound like there's a server thing going on. Now, I don't think, I don't believe that everything I've got gets nice and neatly packaged together on one server and then gets moved around as it goes. Um, I think, and from what I've seen, because you get different flurries on different things at different times, is when you're listing, it's a bit like dollar cost averaging if you were buying stocks. So probably most of you know what that means. If you don't, if you have a thousand pounds and you want to invest in the stock market and you go in today and you buy a thousand pounds worth of Apple shares, then you've got a thousand pounds at today's price. The price goes up, you win. Price goes down, you lose. That's simple. If you take that thousand pounds and over the next 100 days, you buy 10 pounds worth of Apple shares every single day, then today the price might be quite low. So you'll buy them a tenner at low price. Tomorrow it's crept up and it keeps doing that for the next week. So you're going to pay slightly more over the next week, but then they come down again. And that's what the stock market does. It goes up and down and up and down. Um, and you keep doing that for a hundred days, a tenner a day. At the end of it, you're going to have an average buy price, which will be lower than the high and higher than the low but it will be an average price so that you will actually get a better gain over time because you've entered the market in lots of different places so you're going to get a lot of benefits when it's been lower fewer benefits when it's been higher but typically stocks do climb over time so that will work out for you translating that back to the eBay situation if there are multiple servers and they're all active at different times, doing different things. If 
you get 100 new items and you go in and you list them all on a Monday, then they're all going on to the one server potentially. Again, this is just how I'm reading the situation. I don't know if this is true, factual, if it's a load of nonsense, but this is how I'm reading it from what I've seen. They all go onto that one server. So if that server's performing well, you'll get good sales. If that server's not performing particularly well, you won't get good sales. You know, if it's only showing items to people in certain parts of the country or with certain interests, then that could impact you positively or negatively, depending on whether they align with the products that you've listed. So to get the equivalent of the dollar cost averaging, you've got 100 items and you list 10 a day over 10 days. So on Monday, it's server A. On Tuesday, it could be server B. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, etc. Your items are going to be spread across all of the different servers opportunities that eBay provides. So even if one of them, even if half of them aren't performing well for your items, the other half will, and that's the, where you'll be able to get the sales. Now, you're never going to know which part of eBay your items are getting stored away in on any given day. So it's difficult to track that back and see. There might be a way of doing that. If anybody's got that kind of technical knowledge, please share. I'd be absolutely fascinated to know how that could be identified. Um, but if you can identify which ones are doing well, you can win. If you can't, then by listing consistently every single day with the same, perhaps not even the same volume, but the same value of items going up. So if you can list £100 worth of items every single day, then you've got £100 worth of potential sales, which will be successful when they are on the right server. So that becomes the what. It's not the what is listing daily on eBay will make you a success. It's spreading your listings across eBay's different opportunities, servers, however you want to describe it, will give you a better chance of success than having all of your eggs in one basket. So there's the what. The why then quickly follows that if you spread them across all these different baskets, then, and only then, you can get the greatest opportunity to maximise your sales depending on eBay's own performance at any given time. How do you do it? That's where the daily listings comes in. You list consistently on a daily basis, which I try to do, but what I typically do is say, right, well, I want to keep listing every day because I need to, to keep on top of things coming in. But typically, if I go and do a pickup on a Sunday, I'll go through that, I'll have a look, and I'll get, find all the things that are, oh, these are good value. I want to get them listed first because that's going to be the biggest return on what I can get. So I'll typically end up having all the good stuff listed on a Sunday and a Monday. Then I'll start working through all the books that I've got stacked up in my various bundles and they'll go up on Tuesday, Wednesday uh, and then Thursday, Friday I'll start picking through all the other single books which are kind of bread and butter items and they'll typically get listed towards the end of the week. So that's the habit that I've formed there. Um, it does mean that if all the good stuff goes up on a server that ain't performing, it's not going to perform. If, and I, I don't know if this is a thing or not, if I go in and add, say, 10 new John Grisham books to my John Grisham listing, does that reset its position within eBay's structure? Does it stay where it is and it's just increased the quantity? Or does that actually take it out and put it back in? wherever the server is on that day. I don't know that, but I've got a feeling that it might have that impact. And then when I'm putting up all the single listings, they're all getting pinged onto eBay, and depending on what's going on in the days that I do that, is it a success? So what I think I need to do to improve that is when I do that pickup, I break it down so that I am listing a mix of those items every single day. So I'll get some of the really good stuff up, get some of the bundled stuff up, get some of the bread and butter singles items listed every single day rather than do all the good stuff and then work your way down the pile. Uh, and I'm, I'm guessing, and from what I've seen on other videos, a lot of people do the same thing. 
you pick stuff up, whether it's books or anything else, you list all the banging stuff, and then you work your way down, kind of value and priority wise. But to make the best of the whole eBay structure, if you do a mix every day and try and look at it as so if you you know you do a pickup and you've got a thousand pounds worth of stock, you know, sales value to get listed, put up a hundred, a hundred and fifty pounds a day rather than day one you're putting up five hundred for twenty listings. Day two, you're putting up 20 listings that are worth 200. Day three, you're putting up 20 listings that are worth 100, 50, 40, etc. Um, and by doing that, I think, and obviously this is something that I am going to test. Uh, I've looked at evidence, but I'm not going to test it. Uh, that, that will allow you to maximise what you can get from playing that eBay game. So what you want to do is maximise your sales by using eBay's given structure. Why you want to do it is to make sure that you can get stuff turned over and be as profitable as possible from what you've got. And how you're going to do it is by spreading your listings out over a period of time so that you're listing consistently and regularly, which will allow you to drop into the different parts of that eBay structure rather than everything going in in one place. Now you could take that a step further and start scheduling listings so that you've actually got them coming up, you know, if you've got 20 items being listed in a day, have them going out every hour on the hour or five past the hour or 20 past the hour, however it is. And again, that will let them drop into all the different potential opportunities that eBay provides rather than, you know, you could create, and this is again something that I do, I'll create 20, 30 drafts of new items and then I'll go in and edit them all together and just upload them all in one go. So they're all dropping into one pot, whereas probably what would make a lot more sense is to do that the same, but then schedule them so that they're going to drop in every 20 minutes or every hour, depending on how many I've got to go up throughout the day. I hope that makes sense. Um, again, this is just what I have observed and what I think about it. I don't know if I'm wrong or right. I'm going to test it more thoroughly than I have done in the past and see if it bears fruit. Um, but a lot of people who are very successful will tell you, list consistently, I just want to understand the who's and the why's behind it so I know what I'm doing will make a difference. And if it doesn't, I know what aspects of that I can change to try and get it to make a difference as we go along. Make sense? I hope so. Right, let's have a look at another little order which is five Kathy Rice Reeks paperbacks we got Monday morning death du jour grave secrets fatal voyage deja dead so five paperbacks which sold for twelve pounds fifty four Fantastic. Um, another wee bit of an eBay thing. Another thing that has been recommended by umpteen YouTubers at different times over the, the years is ending and relisting, ending and sell similar, all of these things. And say, yeah, I did that and I got a flurry of sales. Same question as before. Why? Why did they get a flurry of sales? So what they did was they ended and they relisted. Why? Because they've heard that that will increase their sales. How did they do it? Well, they just ended and relisted, chose things. But if you think again about the whole, you know, where your stuff may drop into eBay, would ending and relisting mean that those items drop into a different server, a different part of eBay on any given day? So if you were doing that consistently, does it keep things moving about until they land in the right place and get a sale? Another wee thought. I don't know. It's not something I do very often at all myself. Um, but it might be something else to consider. If you've got stuff that's sitting and been seeming very stagnant, it's not getting much interest at all, maybe that's the stuff to end and relist so that it'll go into another part of the structure. Um, I don't know. That's just... We shall see. Right, two more things, one more order, and then there's some YouTube-y stuff 
that I want to have a very, very quick chat about as well. But I'm going to save that to the end because I don't want to be harassing everybody with it, just those of you that are uh, committed enough to stay all the way through. So let's have a look at the last order. And that is... Famous Five, Collection Four. Just make sure I've got the right ones. And Famous Five, Collection Five. So, two big paperbacks. Had these for a few weeks. Uh, and a wee bit of interest in them. Nothing crazy, but there has been a bit of interest. And the two of them sold for £10.92. So, that's all the sales that I've got going out today. On Tuesday, the 30th of January. Um, not brilliant. Really not an awful lot of money. I mean, we've got about 36 quid in total orders there. Uh, so, further that DB, further that postage, I might make a tenner. Not great for a day's work, but to be honest, the amount of effort that's going to take to pack and get done, we're talking mere minutes. So, from that point of view, it's worth doing. It's just not great when you're trying to make any kind of uh, reasonable earnings out of it. Anyway, the YouTube stuff, right? When I got to thinking about the whole eBay structure, algorithms, blah, 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 uh, where my thinking thought started there was, well, what are the key aspects in when you're looking to buy something? I've, I've spoken about this in the past, you know, different customer types. So I've got a list. One is price. Two quality of the listing and um, to expand on that is it a generic listing with a stock photo of a book cover or is it a you know for the same item a picture of the actual book that you're going to get your front cover back cover spine publication page you know, anything else that would be relevant so that's the quality of listing and um, placement of the listing is it right at the top or is it five pages down and speed of delivery so are you going to have to wait a week to get it or are you going to get it the next day those are the kind of contrasts so one is price two is quality of listing three is placement of listing and four is speed of delivery so that's kind of where i'd started with my ebay thinking um when yesterday wasn't a good day i start thinking and wondering about what's going on and those were the first considerations i had one price two quality of listing three placement of listing for speed of delivery and whilst I was doing all of that I was also checking out what was happening on YouTube so thank you all for the, the comments on yesterday's videos and other previous ones some great stuff going on and what I have observed from that and also heard from some other videos and things that I watch is that the more interaction you get on a video the more eBay recommends it to others so there's must be hundreds of millions of people watching YouTube every day. Yeah, I'm, I'm assuming that's the case. Um, but, for example, yesterday's video, I think, has only been recommended to about 1,800 people. So of those hundreds of millions, there's only 1,800 that YouTube has said to, here, you might want to watch this. Um, of those, or let's say, of the entire YouTube population, you know, hundreds of millions, there's only going to be a small fraction that are actually interested in this type of content. So that's already going to limit your market. But if you look at some of the other reseller videos who are doing really, really well, you've got fantastic channels, brilliant content, high quality video production rather than this. Uh, they've got hundreds of thousands of subscribers. They get tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of views in their videos. So there's a much bigger market available than what a lot of us smaller dudes will actually be getting exposed to. So how do you increase that exposure? The videos where I've had a bit more success, I mean, for me, success is 1,000, 2,000 views. That's, that's crazy numbers as far as I'm concerned. But the ones that have had the success have had a slightly higher number of likes clicked and a lot more comments. So if people are interacting with your video, then YouTube seem to say, right, instead of showing it to 2,000 people, We'll recommend it to 5,000 people, 10,000 people, 20,000 people. And as long as those interactions continue at the same rate, then they'll keep recommending it to more and more people as it goes along. And that's how it appears you hit the kind of viral thing. 
So the key thing is getting that interaction on your videos. Now, I could have done this at the start of the video to try and play a game, but no, I thought I would leave it to the end to talk about it. So, to test two things, the first thing that I want to test is whether or not getting a lot of comments and a lot of likes does you know, massively increase the number of impressions that the video gets across YouTube, which should, in theory, increase the number of views. Um, and the second thing is what are people's preferences when buying? So this is with a buyer's head on, not a seller's head on. When you're looking for an item on eBay, obviously I'm selling books, but this could apply to absolutely anything. In what order are your priorities? Do you think about price first, then look at the quality of listing, then is it at the top of the listings? How quickly will they, will they deliver it? Or are you more interested in about being able to get it the next day rather than how much it's going to cost you? Are you happy to scroll through pages and pages and pages to find the best price? I, I hope you understand what I'm saying. So in the comments, if you've come this far, in the comments, leave us a wee coda. So what is your top priority when considering a listing? Then what is your second priority, third priority, fourth priority? If you just want to tell me your top priority, that's fine. If you can tell me your top two, that's great. If you can tell me them all four in order, that's even better. And I can hopefully get a wee bit of a sample there, pull that together and put that into my thinking moving forward and obviously share it back with you guys. So if price is your top priority, just a one. If quality of listing, i.e. lots of pictures, lots of details rather than just one stock image, if quality of listing is your top priority, a two. If the placement of the listing is your priority, is it the first thing that comes up at the top or are you happy to scroll all the way down? So if it's the first thing to come up at the top, then, and that's your big priority, then a three. And if it's how fast that item can get to you, then a four. So if getting it next day is the most important thing rather than waiting a week, put a four in as your top. And then like I say, if you can, if the quality of the listing is your biggest priority, then you look at price, then you look at speed of delivery, then you can say two, one, four. And that'll tell me what people's priorities are there. And if I can get a big enough sample on this, then I can put that all together, have a wee look, and that'll help inform all of us on what the key things are for getting the most out of our sales moving forward. I hope that makes sense. I'll have stuck up somewhere around here that we list and uh, leave it in the comments and let's see if we get more comments than usual. Typically, I mean, I'll get five, a dozen, 20 comments uh, from you guys, which is absolutely brilliant. Uh, but if we can take it beyond that, will that make a big difference to the impressions that this video gets and therefore the number of overall views? Having said that, average viewing time is usually between 10 and 15 minutes for a half hour video. So there's only a proportion of people that actually get to this stage in the video and we'll see what this is all about. Uh, so that will limit that side. But like I said, I don't want to be going in at the start and scaring people off by asking them to do things. But if you've stayed this long and you can take part in that, I would really, really appreciate it. And let's see if it does actually make a difference to everything and will inform me on the YouTube side of it. And obviously I'll share that with you guys too. Uh, but it will inform all of us on, you know, how to work an item so that it's going to be the most appealing, as appealing as possible to potential buyers on eBay and probably any other marketplace as well. Right, that's all for today. I'm going to go and get these four little orders packed up, drop them off at the post office and uh, then get on with my day. Right, thanks very much for watching as ever. See ya, love ya. Bye.